Yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy. Welcome to Watch Me Build It. Today, I will be doing the review of the San Martin SN008G Blue and Silver. I've decided to take a different approach to film the introduction and the conclusion at a slightly different location. Normally, I film in my backyard, but today I'm filming outside the Eco Bar at Taba Eco Hotel, one of the only four-star outdoor hotels in South Africa. I've chosen a different location because the SN008G Blue is a different kind of watch. It's more modern, more sophisticated, maybe a little bit classier. And so I thought I had to do a background that was different to my old backyard. This SN008G is different to the one you can buy at St. Martin's store because it was customized for the Brotherhood of the Submariner Homage. If you want to know about them, click on the card in the corner of the screen and you will get a lot more information. But this watch's dial, crown, case back and strap have been branded up specifically for the BSH. Let's flip the camera and discover a lot more about this piece. Okay, so what comes inside the box? Here I have the SN008G, blue and silver, and this one's running on the supplied NATO strap. A really, really beautiful, beautiful strap. And I think it suits this watch perfectly. We also have its premium strap, the strap that it was intended for, well protected covered in all sorts of plastic with green lifting tabs there to fool you into thinking you can remove the plastic easily. But the truth is, it's quite a battle to get this plastic off. You get the San Martin instruction manual to tell you how to operate your watch, a warranty card that is actually signed and stamped, a hang tag attached to the watch, some additional spring bars for the extra strap, Two screwdrivers, they are there to help you to, to adjust the strap because this strap needs two screwdrivers. Some Loctite, although most of this Loctite has found its way up into the lid. And an excellent little spring bar removal tool. All of this comes in a really good Pelican case, branded with San Martin. Four really strong tabs on the side, so you know that your watch is properly protected en route. Let's have a look at some dimensions over here. 40.5. Lug to lug, 47.5. Lug width, 20.3. 11.5. Slender, slender, slender. And uh, no, this is not the head to head video. I've brought the brother out because he is wearing the actual strap that I'm going to be reviewing. I only took the covering off of one strap. I just straps scratch easily and I didn't want to put too many scratches onto this strap and I didn't want to touch the other one. So that's why only this one is wearing its steel strap. Let's begin with the clasp. So the clasp is a really well machined side, side pusher deployant. The pushers are nice and rounded. So they're not prone to scratching you and digging into your skin. It opens really easily. I've still got protective tape on the inside of this one. A nicely milled clasp. Very simple as well. Um, there are four micro adjust positions. So between a link and the micro adjusts, you're going to find the size that you're looking for. There's no diver's extension, nor is there an on the fly adjustment on this clasp. I think that's probably one of its only downsides. And so that's the clasp and the clasp I'm giving six out of a possible 7.5. Then onto the bracelet. The bracelet is a three link bracelet with riveted links. Now these rivets mimic the bracelet on the Black Bay. And that's really what this watch is doing. It's homaging the Black Bay. You've got brushed surfaces on the outside, brushed surfaces on the inside, and then you've got highly polished rivet plates. 
These rivet plates are separate to the actual link steel. Um, so yeah, it's, it's in essence, every link is one, two, three, four, five pieces of steel. It's a really comfortable bracelet. It starts up at 20 mil and it tapers down to 16 and then up to an 18 mil clasp. It wears very nicely. It's a very comfortable bracelet. It has solid end links. The end links fit into the case very well. There's no end shake whatsoever. And the, the fit is very snug. The only difficulty is the fact that these adjustment pins have a screw head on each side of the pin and that's why you get two screwdrivers the idea being that one screwdriver comes from one side and the other comes from the other they twist in opposite directions and that unlocks the pin the problem is if you've had somebody at the factory who was a bit zealous with the loctite that is a very difficult process now Gary from I Like Watches has made a really good video on how he undoes these. I tried his technique and I think I did get the zealot at the factory who put too much Loctite on. And so I had to use a different technique, which I picked up on the BSH forum. I'm going to insert a little video of what I did, but that's the downside of this strap. So normally I would have given this bracelet a six out of seven and a half. But because of those funny adjustment pins, I'm going to give it a five out of seven and a half. Now, where I remove the protective covering on the strap on the black and gold, I removed the sticker off of the case back on the blue one so we could get a good look at that. Look at that beautiful etched case back. Peace, love. And 120 clicks, the 25th of January 2021. That's the day that www.bsh.zone, the website for the Brotherhood, launched. This case back is superlative. I'm sorry that it only counts for a weighted five, but it's getting a full five. Now we're going to be taking a look at the case and the bezel. Beginning with the crown. The crown has a beautifully etched logo with the BSH emblem on it. It's a nice deep etching. It's never going to fade away. It's a beautiful beady surface at the bottom of the etching and a high polished face on the crown. Really a great piece of equipment. And coming round to the side, you can see how the crown attaches. There we go screws nicely into the case it's a beautiful screw down crown and uh, i think it just it sits beautifully it's easy to operate um, and yeah a great great piece of machinery and onto the case itself now san martin made a great decision when they designed this watch they decided not to take the cue from tudor and they didn't leave a highly polished case side in fact instead they gave it a beautiful, beautiful brush. And I think it's a great bit of work over there. There are spots where, I don't know, there's a little bit of inconsistency in that brushing. But you have to look under it, at it under harsh light to see it. But other than that, beautifully brushed case, beautifully brushed lug tops. And the decision to leave the side of the case brushed and not polished means that that glinting chamfer stands out so beautifully look at how it disappears under the bezel and flares towards the bottom of the lug i think this case is stunning the other thing i love about this watch is how slender it is at 11.5 mil it will slip under anything that you're wearing any sleeve that you have it's just going to glide right underneath now we have the coin edged bezel over here again a statement of elegance and just very unobtrusive i really like coin edge bezels and and this one is done very very well let's have a listen to the clicks on this one isn't that great 120 clicks all of them crisp not not a not a not a beat mist over here 
and the bezel alignment is flawless. So for case and bezel, where I could have scored up to 15, this one is getting a 13 out of 15. What about the crystal and the dial? I think the crystal and the bezel are paired so incredibly well. It's a chamfered crystal with a very moderate dome. Can you see how it distorts it the, right at the end of that angle? A very, very, very moderate dome. But the dish or the dome on that crystal seems to run off onto the same kind of angle as the bezel insert forming one uniform kind of surface on the top of the watch so the crystal and the the bezel insert i believe they pair very very well there are some who say that the the, the bezel insert is too glossy i like the gloss i think it gives the watch its own unique character because i know that on the black bay 58 you're getting a matte a matte bezel insert the dial is also a matte blue but guys the color i don't know if my camera is going to do it properly but it really is a great blue um i don't know my blues really well but i think it's probably closer to royal blue um but it really does it pops beautifully i love the color of this dial what i like specifically is the silver and the blue together they just give this watch an entirely different character to the gold and the black there's no red text used on this dial it's just silver just blue monochrome in i suppose the truest sense of the word also another difference between the blue and the black is that the loom is white it's bgw9 it glows blue at night and it's white in the daylight that white and the silver around the indexes matches nicely with the silver on the bezel insert and i just think it's a stunning arrangement and so crystal and dial are going to get a 14 on this watch 14 out of 15 oh or should it be a 13 i don't know how to compare these two watches it genuinely is a challenge now what about the movement this watch also runs the pt5000 the pt5000 is a well manufactured homage to the eta2824 it's manufactured in china it's got bi-directional winding it's automatic 25 joules 28,800 beats per hour and they say the accuracy is plus minus 12 seconds a day this is probably running closer to about plus 10. now this particular movement isn't doesn't wind as smoothly as on the black watch there's a little bit of a tick 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 as you're winding it and i'm not sure what's going on on the inside of the movement when i click it out to the date function i can feel there's no date works left there's just a ghost position and then coming out to the hand winding everything's working the way it ought to but there's something on the inside of this movement it's not unhealthy but it doesn't feel as buttery smooth as the other one did and so i'm giving this where i would have where i gave an 18 to the black and gold i'm giving this one an 18 minus one for that odd click when i'm winding it so i'm giving it a 17 out of a possible 20. The loom is also going to get a 9. It's very different. It's blue loom. It's not green loom, but it looks amazing. This watch truly, truly lights up like a torch at night. Value, just as it was for the black and gold, I think, although this is expensive for a Chinese watch, this watch holds its own with the best out there. I was showing this piece to a friend recently and he's been the owner of some really high quality swiss watches and he said these watches definitely can hold their own when i told him what the price was he almost fell off of his chair because he wouldn't expect to pay less than twenty thousand rand for a watch like this now that's probably about fourteen hundred dollars um these watches are selling for three hundred and thirteen dollars with a pt 5000 movement or 438 with the Salita SW200 but with the PT5000 I still think it's great value it's getting a 7 out of possible 10. What about the X Factor? Right so this is my watch case and uh, it's got all of the, the the pieces at my disposal right now and I've got the the blue SN008 at the top and I've got the black and gold at the bottom and I've arrayed it like that on purpose. The the top row really represents the modern watches that are that I own and then the bottom row 
represents those that have more of a retro look. And really, therein lies the great difference. It's incredible how taking the same case, the same strap, the same setup, and changing a couple of colors can move a watch from being retro to being modern. And really, that's what the SN008 is. It's a crisp, fresh, modern watch. And I've really enjoyed my time with this watch. Have I reached for it as much as the black and gold? Yes. In fact, at the beginning, I reached for it more often because it was new and it had a look and a feel that I'd not yet come across. More recently, though, it hasn't been like that. More recently, I found myself reaching for the warmer golden tones of the black and gold. But will I mark this one's X Factor down? No. If I was trying to choose, I wouldn't know how to do it. I'd probably buy one and then save up for the next. So this one's X Factor is also going to get a nine. So what do you think? Blue or gold? <laughs> it's such a huge question. You would have noticed that this particular unit was marked down because of its movement. The movement felt a bit grainy on wind. That's not a problem with the blue watches per se. It's just an issue in this unit. I marked it slightly higher on dial and crystal. But that was in the moment. It, it, it was a subjective decision. I guess what I'm trying to say is this. This one also scored 85 out of 100. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say it's really difficult to tell whether the blue and silver or black and gold is the better of these two watches. I know that the same problem exists with the Tudor. I've watched guys reviewing the blue and I've watched them reviewing the black and it seems like quite an ambivalent thing. I think at the end of the day, it, 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 it's a subject of choice. It's about your personality. It's about the mood you're in. It's about what the watch needs to do for you on that day. If you can afford both, I'd say that solves your problem. And you can flip a coin and decide on which one you want to choose on any given day. Because I think the coin's about the most objective decision that you're going to find on these watches. If you're only able to afford one, how do you choose? Well, I'd say you need to look at your overriding personality. Are you someone who's a bit more emotional? Are you someone who's a bit more nostalgic? Are you someone who values the history of the dive watch, who loves the unguarded crown feel and the look of the gold indices? Then definitely go for the black and gold. But if you're a more modern person, if you find yourself in this kind of setting, cocktails, drinks, or maybe you're out next to a sport field a bit more regularly, maybe you wear jeans more regularly than you wear button-up shirts, then maybe the blue watch is the one that you want to buy. Either way, you cannot go wrong with the San Martin SN 008G. Guys, I've really enjoyed this journey. I've really enjoyed the fun of unboxing, wearing, reviewing these watches. But more than that, I've really enjoyed engaging with the brotherhood of the Submariner homage. If you haven't watched my profile piece on them yet, please click on the card in the top right corner and enjoy the story behind these watches. Thank you very much for watching Watch Me Build It. Thank you for spending time with me. If you're keen to buy one of these, the links are down below. There are affiliate links. I will get some commission out of your purchase and I'll use it to buy something else enticing, engaging and spectacular so that I can do some more reviews. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.